feel like a yoga instructor. I know. You look like one. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. In through the butt. <laughs> now that's harder to do. <laughs> that one's going to take me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't <laughs> top that. I can't do anything to top that. Um, Yeah, welcome back to the Ride Home Podcast. My name is Abby. Hey, guys, it's Caitlin. We made a couple of promises a couple of Just uh, a few. months ago when a certain childhood star of ours dropped a trailer for her new movie, when thinking about Lindsay Lohan's return mm -hmm. to film, mm -hmm. which I never really thought was going to happen. We never thought this would she happen. She was like living in Ibiza and like <laughs> dating like a tycoon. And there was just a whole bunch of things yeah. that made me believe that she was not coming back. She was back. just done. Like, I'm pretty sure she said she's like done living in America. She's done, done with right. it all. And when she dropped a Christmas movie trailer... I think every single person that was born in the late 90s and <laughs> or the late 80s and early 90s collectively lost our shit together. Yes. The return of our queen. The return of our queen. If you haven't guessed it yet, Falling for Christmas, starring Lindsay Lohan and the little blonde from Glee, Cord Overstreet. Cord Overstreet. Who knew he was still acting? I, I didn't know. And I, I, I actually remember that I think I had a crush on him a little bit when he was yeah. on Glee. Like, I thought he was cute. We all kind of did, I think. So if you aren't familiar with the hallmark Christmas movie genre. Mm -hmm. This is in that genre. So this is not a Christmas movie like Home Alone or The Santa Claus or Muppets Christmas Carol. Nothing like that. No. This is a true and pure Christmas romance movie. Possibly in the truest sense of the word. I mean, let's just call it what it is. It's like a B-list Christmas movie. Mm -hmm. That's what Hallmark Christmas movies are. Right. It's the B-list. They're like soap operas almost. Accurate. Typically lower production value mm -hmm. and some cheesy writing and... The same old tropes. The same, yes. And I think you wouldn't necessarily place very many movie stars into mm -hmm. these you know they're typically played by like Meghan Markle was in one of them <laughs> like yeah like lower level I mean obviously she's like married to a prince now but before Meghan Markle was not 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 an real A-list celeb no so this is definitely one of those and I will give a quick um synopsis of the movie straight from Google okay a young, newly engaged heiress has a skiing accident in the days before Christmas. After she is diagnosed with amnesia, she finds herself in the care of a handsome cabin owner and his daughter. First of all, he doesn't own a cabin. He owns no. a lodge, like a ski yeah. resort. So, Google, I'm closing you now. Exit the tab. We're just going to say bye-bye. As always, Caitlin, what are your thoughts and feelings? <laughs> Fresh out of this doozy. Woo, Lord. Okay, so obviously I'm just as excited as the next 90s baby right. to see Lindsay Lohan acting in a movie again. Mm -hmm. So we're going to just like, that's our positive about this movie mm -hmm. is that Lindsay Lohan has made a return to mm -hmm. acting. She's like radiant. I mean, you can kind of, you can tell that homegirl partied a lot like you can she's tell weathered. she yeah she's a little weathered but i think she looks gorgeous she looks great and i think that may be the only good thing about this movie <laughs> <laughs> you're just like the rest is i mean for what it is like mm -hmm. we said it's a b-list kind of a christmas movie it's right extremely similar to all of the Hallmark Christmas movies, mm -hmm. which are not films, which are not really even movies of any kind of caliber. They're garbage, They're hot, stinking piles of doo-doo trash. So for what it was being in that genre, I wouldn't say it's the worst I've ever seen. Uh-huh. 
but it certainly wasn't the best. <laughs> I feel like there's more to make fun of about this movie mm -hmm. than there is things for me to list that I enjoyed or liked. Okay. This is crazy. I thought it was great. You did? Yeah. I thought that, I mean, I am not a connoisseur of this genre and I've only seen probably maybe four to five movies that you've put on that I've just kind of like watched mm -hmm. while you have played. And I have to say that out of all of them, I thought this one was like light years ahead of the rest. Okay. And I'm judging this movie purely as its genre, because if you put it up against like any other movie, mm -hmm. literally, <laughs> like, <laughs> like actually any other, movie. like any other movie, obviously it's not up to snuff. No. However, I will say that I have never seen a movie in this particular genre where there was even one half decent actor. Mm -hmm. And I thought both Lindsay and Cord, even though the script was just absolute dog water, yeah. I thought they brought a, like a sincerity to it and okay. like a warmth to it. And honestly, I never thought that I would ever watch a movie with Lindsay Lohan and feel like a maternal warmth from her. Mm -hmm. And I really mm -hmm. got that. Mm -hmm. I know like in the movie, which by the way, we're not spoilers are just going to be the whole, uh -huh. <laughs> the whole episode. Yeah. One of the like tropes of this genre is a, mm -hmm. is a widowed father with, mm -hmm. a, with his daughter. Mm -hmm. And Cordover Street is a widowed father who has a daughter. Right. And I thought that all the scenes where Lindsay Lohan is interacting with his daughter honestly were like sweeter than Cord Overstreet interacting with her. Like it yeah, felt uh, very tender and warm. And I also thought that out of the Hallmark movies that I've seen, it made me feel like I was in the Christmas season. Like it didn't, I, I didn't feel like they just dropped me into some random like small town in America mm -hmm. that just happens to be snowing. Like sure. it was a very purposeful ski resort town, mm -hmm. kind of like Stowe, Vermont. Or, it's like a ski town and everything is decked out for Christmas. And on top of that, Court Overstreet's character runs a cozy cabin resort. Mm -hmm. What's it called? The North Star? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Something very like <laughs> on the nose. Yeah. I thought the way that they decorated that particular set was really, really gorgeous. And it made mm -hmm. me feel like warm and cozy and Christmassy. Yeah. And so I think the mixture of the sincere performances from them and the set design and the funny parts that like were just truly awful and that make you roll your eyes and cringe. cringe and all of that like putting it all together like I really enjoyed watching every bit of it yeah does that make sense no that definitely makes sense and I wouldn't say that I didn't enjoy it like yeah. I'm not gonna like completely trash it I've also seen significantly more movies in this genre than mm -hmm. you right so I have like a larger breadth of knowledge of what I'm comparing this to. Right. Because what you're describing about like the set and the town and everything, like I've seen like a million movies that have also created yeah. that, but it's just because I've seen more. But I will say I do agree with you about the acting and the performances in general. We're definitely a notch above the rest. Yeah. I definitely do agree with you about Lindsay Lohan's performance. I also felt kind of a maternal warmth from her. Mm -hmm which was weird because something that I kind of struggled with throughout the whole movie was just thinking about the parent trap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because for those of you who don't know, that's probably like in my top five favorite movies of all time. Yeah. And I've probably seen it 500 times. Maybe more. Possibly more. And I just kept like... <laughs> picturing her like saying lines from the parent trap mm -hmm. but like as an adult <laughs> like for some reason I just kept wanting her to say I have a brilliant beyond brilliant idea <laughs> and like I don't know like I just felt kind of distracted by that I guess yeah. because it's like she's so I guess iconic yeah for specific roles right and for me like it's always going to be parent trap like I mm -hmm. always will think of that and like even in the very beginning where we see her like getting off of an elevator mm -hmm. I was just like it's Annie James yeah. like getting off of an <laughs> elevator like it's just right kind of nostalgic for me mm -hmm. so it was kind of weird to see her like as an adult being like maternal and like yeah. falling in love and like it was 
interesting. It was interesting. And I also think that for me, my movie for Lindsay Lohan is Freaky Friday. Sure. And she actually does play like a little because she's obviously playing Mm -hmm. her mom. So she does play that maternal side to her. But obviously she was in her late teens or early 20s when Uh she filmed that. And so some of those scenes... Like when she's interacting with Harry and she's Mm -hmm. trying to play like his mom trapped inside the sister's body. It's a little clunky and awkward, but I thought like seeing her grown up and, you know, she's not a mom, but Mm -hmm. like she went from being a child star to being like a party animal. Mm -hmm. And so you never really saw her ever mature. Right. And we never saw her like get married and have kids and mature. Mm -hmm. And so we really just have no idea like where Lindsay Lohan has been this (laughs) whole time. We have not been aware of the status of Lindsay Lohan. She's, yeah. From the moment we heard her voice, Mm. I immediately was like, oh my God. It's Lindsay. Like mm-hmm. she's she's back. Like it that that raspy, yeah, hoarse little voice of hers. Like the second I heard it, it put me in Mean Girls. It put me in Freaky Friday, mm-hmm. and I was just really excited just to see her on screen again. And I thought that even though she was given not the best material to work mm-hmm. with, obviously, you could tell that she took it seriously enough yeah. that she didn't just phone it in and, and make her paycheck, which I'm sure they spent all of the budget on her. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> because I'm sure. They sure as fuck didn't spend it on the green screen now. <laughs> no, not a lot of budget. No, there, there is there is a scene where Cord Overstreet, whose hotel is struggling really badly, uh-huh. is presenting or wants to present a business proposal to Lindsay Lohan's father, who mm-hmm. is a like a hotel tycoon. Right. And her father, the only way he can present his proposal to him is if Cord <laughs> Overstreet races him down a ski slope and is right. the first one to arrive back. So they have a right. ski race. And and the footage cuts between two obvious professional skiers who are like in like the bent over <laughs> position. Yes, like Olympic skiers. Yes, like slalom doing the like back right. and forth. And <laughs> it immediately cuts to close ups of this actor who plays the dad in Cord Overstreet with like obnoxious wind in their hair. And then the absolute worst green screen I've ever seen oh behind my them. God. I could do a better job. And I'm not joking. Yeah. Like, I actually could do a better job I I honestly (laughs) believe it and I was just sitting there thinking like oh man like Lindsay Lohan really gobbled up the entire budget of this movie she had to have I have to just bring up technical stuff that I picked up on let's hear it so the biggest issue that the movie has from a technical perspective is that I don't think whoever edited this movie maybe has ever edited anything before. Oh, no. (laughs) Because (laughs) an actor will... So if you're, for example, taking a bite of cereal in Mm -hmm. a movie, uh, no one's eating cereal in this movie, but if you're taking a bite of cereal, if you are cutting the spoon raising up to your mouth and you're cutting that action from an actor, Mm -hmm. you're going to cut the spoon at the same elevation when you cut to the other angle. So the spoon's going to be either touching the person's lips or it's going to be at their collarbone. Mm -hmm. There were cuts where somebody was turning their head and then it would cut to a different angle and their head would be back at the old place and then they would turn again. Oh no. And so it was like I have never seen that bad of action editing maybe ever oh no who allowed this it was their first time. <laughs> it was yeah <laughs> and also whoever edited this they either did not have a colorist or their editor is just the worst colorblind person i like ever oh, because wow. you would have this really warm gorgeous shot of Lindsay lohan with like christmas lights behind her and she's just glowing mm-hmm. like gorgeous beautiful shot and then the very next shot everything is grayed out like everything is dark cold gray her (laughs) whole face is in shadows and i was just like oh no in projects that i reviewed i would have told my editors to change to fix it (laughs) and we don't make movies and they don't air on netflix so (laughs) (laughs) right and my last technical edit is that there was not a single audio level that was even (laughs) 
<laughs> throughout that entire movie literally Lindsay lohan would be like quietly talking like this in one scene and then the next scene it was really loud and everybody was screaming yeah. and you were riding the volume i was just gonna say i movie. was the volume was moving <laughs> all over the place you were like going up and down movie. up and down yeah it's like watching something on hulu and the ads come in and yeah, you're, you're just like, like ah <laughs> like a, nu- a, a nuclear explosion <laughs> <laughs> so clearly it was abysmal in terms of technicality which is disappointing because again like i truly think that if you gave my company that has like 12 people in it the same budget that they had we could probably make a better movie probably. than this one i will say i know you mentioned this earlier mm-hmm. but since we're on like technical notes the script oh man my favorite Ugh. can i tell you what my favorite line is yeah, in the then entire I'm movie tell you mine. go ahead my favorite <laughs> line in the entire movie is at the very end after lindsay lohan and cord overstreet finally kiss and cord overstreet goes <laughs> What a Christmas, guys. <laughs> yes. You lost your absolute shit. I lost my mind over that line. Just like the timing and the delivery. I will say like, I don't know if it was like a directing thing mm-hmm. or a script thing, but a lot of chords lines specifically mm-hmm. were very delayed. Yeah. Like extremely delayed reactions. Like there was one scene where he's trying to like get Lindsay Lohan to kiss him under the mistletoe and she takes the mistletoe from him and throws it over her shoulder. Uh Uh-huh. And like instead of like immediately having a reaction, like 10 seconds later, his eyes, like his eyebrows raise and he goes, oh. (laughs) And it was like, (laughs) where were you 10 seconds ago, Cord? Which, I mean, that necessarily isn't his fault. Like, that, again, is the editor. It's the editor's job to to layer those, you know, pieces together. And it was like the most cut and dry, like, okay, it's Lindsay Lohan's line, so we're looking at Lindsay Lohan. Mm -hmm. And now her line is over, so now we're looking at (sighs) Cordover Street. And I was just like, how? I have seen Food Network shows edited better oh truly joanna Gaines like is f- every food network show is edited better than that like what do you think i'm pioneer the woman, pioneer woman that filmed on her iphone is <laughs> like edited better than that like she's shot by her like little nephew that like didn't graduate college yeah. so he's working on set Stuart, he's doing the yeah. best he can but like whoever edits her show <laughs> did better than a netflix like original movie it's true okay on the topic of the script still yeah. like going back to that because you shared your favorite line. I'm going to share my favorite line, but it does require just a touch of context. Okay. So obviously you read in the description of the movie, the little short bio that she's diagnosed with amnesia. Mm-hmm. Even though she suffered a minor concussion, she yeah. somehow gets amnesia. <laughs> I thought that detail was interesting. Yeah, they were like, she's fine. She has a minor concussion, but she doesn't remember anything before <laughs> the accident. <laughs> yeah. It was like just a minor concussion and also somehow amnesia. Yeah. Question mark? We don't know. Okay. So she's got amnesia mm-hmm. and she's basically like missing. Right. Because she's discovered by Cordover Street's character. Mm -hmm. jake jake russell jake russell okay so she's like at his little lodge Mm -hmm. she's missing halfway into the movie the family and her family and friends like realize she's missing and they're trying to like piece the clues together of where Mm -hmm. she could be and the thing that like does it for the dad of how he knows that she's like gone missing and Mm -hmm. not just like left he says my daughter never goes anywhere without her luggage. <laughs> and it was just like this most serious. Like it was like, that's it. He cracked the case. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes he over here. solved the mystery. She has been abducted. Yep. Or she's missing. And it was just like her suitcases were in her closet. Right. Well, she never goes anywhere without her luggage. And my favorite thing is that this scene where the dad like realizes that she's like fully missing happens like four days after. Like she's been living at Cordova <laughs> Street. I mean. Like, which is in the same town, by the way. Yeah. And she's apparently this like really rich heiress of this giant ski lodge that's in the same town. And right. Cordover Street's like, well, why don't we go to the Christmas festival to see if anybody recognizes you? (laughs) And no one. Meanwhile, she's famous. The mayor is standing four feet in front of her, (laughs) giving a whole ass speech. Right. Doesn't recognize her. It's just like, who could she be? But you know who does recognize her? Santa Claus. 
Santa Claus knows a bitch. Who the fuck knew her? Santa Claus was going to come? We didn't. We know. didn't. But that was a nice touch, I have to say. It yeah. was just like, oops, and Santa's here. Did you like the Santa, though? Because I uh, think he was a little creepy. He, You know what he looked like to me? Hmm. He looked a little bit like the Coca-Cola Santa. Oh, okay. I can see that. Yeah, there was a Santa that l- his g- entire character was that he was just this townsperson that, like, he would like wink and then something magical would happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he never really interacted with any of the characters, but also like kind of orchestrated the entire thing. The whole entire thing. So like Santa Claus is just meddling in this tiny ski town, specifically like on Christmas. So like, why is yeah. he not at the North Pole? What's why is he, he not doing? working? Yeah. He's off duty in this ski well, Santa, why are you taking off work in the most important time yeah, of the Santa, year? We all need you. They needed you. Apparently, Cordover Street really needed a new sleigh. And so he <laughs> <laughs> had to go. But Santa might also have a drug problem. Because what? I don't know if you picked up. <laughs> I don't know if you picked up on this. This might have something to do with why he was off the job. Okay. The first time he like made a magic moment happen. Uh-huh. He did a little finger tap on his nose. Oh, well, that's like a thing. It is. Yeah, that's like a. Uh. Like a, it uh, looked a I'm little bit more like right now. Got something up my sleeve. Tippity okay. tappity. Tippity tappity. <laughs> okay, well, maybe I just thought they were like getting cynical and I wanted Santa to be a you cokehead. <laughs> but like, honestly, he in real life, Santa probably is a cokehead. How the fuck else is he going to get around the world in 24 hours? Caitlin. Do you still believe in Santa? Of course I do. All right. I don't actually believe uh, in him. No. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. If he were real. Yeah. He would have to have some sort of a drug problem. To get through that. To the be whole able night. to do the things that he does. Okay. So that was my thoughts on Santa potentially having a drug problem. But I guess <laughs> my theories were incorrect. <laughs> I will say that one of my favorite scenes in the entire movie was when Lindsay Lohan was in the hospital and a <laughs> nurse just appeared out of nowhere and yes. delivered her a, a Salisbury steak. Yes. Like there's <laughs> yes. there's an entrance like if if Lindsay Lohan's in the hospital bed the entrance to the room and like the door out into the rest of the hospital would be to her left, right? Uh Uh-huh. And so to her right is windows Mm -hmm. and a wall. So Mm -hmm. just like a full wall of windows. (laughs) Yes. And Cordover Street is standing at the foot of her bed Mm -hmm. and the cop and the doctor are standing to her left. Mm -hmm. And so we don't see anybody else come into the room, leave the room, exit the room, move past Cordover Street, nothing. And they're all talking about, well, she can't stay here very long because we'll have to discharge her. Where's she going to go? Right. And Cordover Street's like, well, you know, you can come stay with us. Like, we have food. And then she's like, well, I don't know. What kind of food? And then a random nurse <laughs> just drops a Salisbury steak on her lap. Just appears. And just appears from her right. So yeah. he, like, the window? through the window. <laughs> Maybe, maybe she has Santa. a balcony. Oh my god! <laughs> maybe maybe cokehead Santa like morph. You know when yeah. uh, in the Santa Claus when he like gets oh, like he gets yeah, sucked yeah. in. Maybe he gets sucked in through the window and delivers Salisbury steak. It's possible. You never know. And then she's like, "Oh well." She's like, "Well, maybe I will come." <laughs> On second thought. <laughs> On second thought, I will come to your cabin. But like, what was with the doctor kicking her out of the hospital? It's like she just got there, and you right. said she has amnesia, and you're sending her home because <laughs> yeah. Cord was like, "Well, I don't know about me," and maybe she could stay here. And the doctor was like, "No, mm-hmm. it's going to be a hard pass for me." <laughs> <laughs> on attending to her medical needs it's like listen her you gotta serious get out of here. medical condition <laughs> it was just like mm. i think my favorite part was the cop that like truly didn't care that she didn't know who she was because she <laughs> he was like well eventually somebody's gonna figure out who you are so i'll let you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'll keep an ear out <laughs> I'll ca- see I'll if call anybody you. stops by and yeah if they do then then we'll have our answer the cop's entire plan like he's not gonna post anything on the on tv he's not gonna put <laughs> anything in the paper he's not gonna make any kind of announcement he's just like well eventually somebody's gonna come over and you know tell us who you are yeah and the so. doctor's the doctor's medical advice 
<laughs> was to leave the hospital once mm-hmm. again, kicking out of the hospital and to go do normal activities. Yeah, because it'll bring her memory back. Because it'll, well, she doesn't remember what her fucking normal activities were, Doc. <laughs> So how is she supposed to resume her <laughs> usual activities? She doesn't know what her usual we activities are. Yeah. And so then she goes to Cord's little inn mm-hmm. and he's like, oh, usual activities. She'll be a housewife. She'll be my housekeeper. She'll make my beds and do my <laughs> laundry and learn how to cook. And she falls in love through service. Uh, a true holiday miracle (laughs) you know i also kind of realized halfway through the movie that they like derailed the romance plot and like the Lindsay lohan figuring herself out and Uh like him coming to terms with his wife's death like they had a very clear plot and then all of the sudden it became the plot of white christmas (laughs) (laughs) like the the whole plot (laughs) of white christmas yeah it's just without music yeah so like the whole plot of like saving the general's ski yes. resort it was the same exact plot it was instead of having like a musical to like raise awareness they just like threw a party mm-hmm. and somehow by like word of mouth all of the guests showed up with a check and they all arrive at the same time because <laughs> because a snowplow had to make it up the hill to get there. And so they're sitting there waiting like, oh, my God, like nobody's going to come. And then the mayor walks in. They're like, oh, like, where is everybody? And he's like, well, they're behind the snowplow. They're all coming. Like, <laughs> <laughs> And then like 50 guests appear at the same time. Which there was a really funny wide shot of the party where... Um, you see everybody standing around while like I think the mayor was giving a speech or somebody was giving a speech and like they forgot to fill in the extras yes. and it's like 10 people standing there and I was like <laughs> why did they use that shot I know <laughs> also back to the checks that they brought mm-hmm. they could not be bothered to find pieces of paper or just I don't know an actual check it looked like Somebody on set pulled out like some old Walgreens receipts <laughs> and they cut them in half <laughs> and that's what they handed him. They're like, well, I owe you for those ski lessons you gave my son all those years ago. Uh-huh. I'm like, what is that crumpled piece of paper that looks like an index card? <laughs> like just, I'm you didn't, couldn't get a blank check? Maybe they just wrote a note that said, I owe you. Like the, yeah. the letters I owe you 50 yeah. bucks. And then they're all just like, we love you, Jake. Here's <laughs> here's all your receipts. Which then the really funny part about the whole thing is that they have this whole scene about like everybody giving all of this money. But then the real thing that brings the business back is that Lindsay Lohan on TV after like it's discovered that she was at this resort this whole time mm-hmm. and had amnesia. She was like, well, I was staying at the North Star Inn and you all should visit it because it's amazing. And then like all the calls it. come through. That's and it. And they're booked out for the rest of the year. Now those people just wasted all of their money because now they're like fully booked and <laughs> yeah. like they don't need the money anymore. <laughs> right. Like they don't need the money. The mayor also was like, also, in addition to these checks that we gave you, we put in a request for you to become a historic site. We, yeah. we didn't actually get it approved <laughs> yet. Randomly. It could be a historic site. And it's like, guys, like we're just going to get a bunch of reservations because mm-hmm. Lindsay Lohan said to come here. It's okay. We didn't even need your checks and your historical site nomination. You know what, though? That There's something just so endearing about how bad it was, though. Like the, the plot. And again, I will say, like, I, I actually enjoyed seeing how it would play out i enjoyed Mm -hmm. like Lindsay lohan's performance i really did feel christmassy after like i felt Mm -hmm. like i was feeling the christmas vibe sure um i will say that i absolutely hated despised couldn't stand uh disliked whatever word in the thesaurus you can find any scene that involved her fiance ted or tad Tad. and the dad kept calling him ted (sighs) my god he was insufferable which like the funniest thing was that at the very beginning of the movie he said like me and my girlfriend are about to do something and i was like wait a second wait a second that's not her gay best friend and (laughs) you were like no that's her boyfriend and like at the end we find out that he like is gay Mm -hmm. but like 
they didn't sell us on him being straight at the not beginning. Not at all. <laughs> they could have done the same thing with his character of him being an influencer mm-hmm. and him being like the opposite of Court over Street. Where sure. Court is, you know, down to earth and genuine, mm-hmm. hardworking, like X, Y, Z. They could have done that with like a city slicker kind of guy. Yeah. That was like the guy in Titanic that Rose is engaged oh, to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? like, a, like a fuddy daddy. Yeah. Like a stuck up asshole. Yeah. They could have done the same thing sure. and you could have even made him an influencer and done like similar plot yeah. lines, but like he was insufferable. He didn't sell that he was straight at no. all and they didn't sell that they were in a relationship at all. No. Lindsay Lohan and him, they both get into this like accident where they basically like fall over on opposite sides of a mountain. Uh huh. And he ends up with this bum that lives in a fish, like an ice fishing shack. Yeah. And he like just stays with him for a week. Eating which like that's, beans. A, that's another thing is like, why didn't he like ask the guy for help? Like he literally right. was just like, well, I guess I'm guess staying I'm with you now. Just chill with you. Yeah. <laughs> chill by the fire. <laughs> so every time they cut back to him, I was just like, oh, brother, they didn't need to have us watch him eat beans no. by the fire with like you know who he reminded me of the guy that he was hanging out with mm. is um tom hanks's character in polar express yeah. that sits on top yes. of the train yes yes yeah very similar so just eating beans with tom hanks just <laughs> <laughs> old tom hanks i'd eat beans with tom hanks oh hell yeah for sure um i read online somewhere that someone called this the citizen Kane of hallmark christmas movies i know and I love that description of it because it really is. It like took every single trope, mm-hmm. every single stereotype, and it just slammed it all into one movie. And then obviously had this star in Lindsay Lohan mm-hmm. that we were all so excited to see. All of that being said, mm-hmm. what is your little popcorn rating? Originally, it was going to be a small. Uh-huh. But I think I'm going to give it a medium. Mm-hmm. Because after talking it out with you and kind of just thinking back, it's definitely better Mm -hmm. than most of the Hallmark movies that I've seen. It's definitely, I remember the Christmas night, the one with the night that was like teleported into time and yeah. Yeah. And that was, I think, a Netflix original, that one that you're talking about. I think so. Also, the one with Vanessa Hudgens, where she plays like the British and Baker, English princess. Yeah, the princess witch. Terrible. Like, this was better than that, right? I feel like that. I think so. But maybe I'm just biased because I like Lindsay Lohan. I don't know. And that could be too. But I do think, like, objectively speaking, I do think it was just a notch above the rest. Yeah. What's your popcorn score? I'm going to say that as a movie, it's a small. Sure. As a Christmas romance, large. Absolutely. Large popcorn. Oh, my God. Yeah. As 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 a Hallmark movie, this is a large for the genre. Okay. But if you're comparing it to like any other movie that came out this year, it's a small, small, (laughs) small, smallest of the small. Right. Put it at the end. Right. Just as a movie by itself. But here's the thing. Like I loved Moonfall and that's a terrible movie. Right. So like you can still watch a terrible movie and enjoy it. Sure. And I think this is the case of it being just an absolutely terrible movie. But 100% worth the watch, especially if you grew up as a girl in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to see this movie. You have to. (laughs) If you feel personally connected to Lindsay Lohan like we Mm -hmm. do, please watch this movie. You'll love it. Speaking of Lindsay Lohan, (laughs) the first note in both of Caitlin's and my phones. Hold on. Read your note and I'll read mine at the count of three. Okay. One, two, three. Titties. Tim titties though <laughs> who knew Lindsay lohan was stacked we certainly didn't she came down the steps for the the very first scene or out of the elevator or whatever and both of us like looked over at each other and we were like Lindsay, we were like hello tits out for christmas <laughs> we love it <laughs> Well, everybody, that does it for us. I know this was extremely chaotic for an episode. <laughs> I will say Caitlin had two glasses of wine before 
this yeah. episode so we're a little turned up i played christmas movie trivia with my friends on zoom tonight before we film yeah. this so it happens <laughs> tis the season <laughs> tis the season after all next week it will not be very christmasy but i'm really really excited to see this movie mm. we're seeing the whale starring brendan Fraser, so it's another actor of our childhood coming back for their comeback which this is a much higher caliber movie than falling for christmas this would be a film <laughs> for sure so um we are going to be seeing the whale and we'll drop a new episode next friday and keep an eye out on our instagram because leading up to christmas we are going to have a Christmas movie tournament to yes. pick what our listeners feel is the best Christmas movie of Can't all time. fucking wait. I hope you guys all get out there and do something Christmassy this weekend. Watch some good Christmas movies. Mm -hmm. Throw on Falling for Christmas Please. if you have some time. And we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for joining us on the ride home. Bye.